Hello. This is actually the second uh, video I've done about this, but the first one um, wasn't great. So I thought I'd give it another go. And I pulled out this. Maybe you recognize these guys, maybe you don't. It's actually probably a better chance that you don't recognize them because these guys are called the Datsuns and they're from uh, New Zealand. Now, I don't do a lot of uh, videos about New Zealand artists because I know that they're not really known outside of New Zealand, so their appeal is going to be fairly limited. But these guys did have some success overseas. We'll talk a little bit about that. So um, they were around, well, I think they're still actually active today, but the, the peak of their popularity and this album was in the early 2000s, and they were part of that early 2000s, I never know what to call this kind of music, but I guess kind of garage rock revival, I guess is, is one way you could call it. But it was a bit broader than that because there were other bands we would include in that kind of movement that weren't necessarily garage rock. Um, so, I, you know, if we think <clears throat> a lot of these bands had the in their name, um, there was a kind of a scene in New York around them as well, uh, a lot of these bands. But So when I think of this movement, I think The Strokes, they they kind of seem to be the ones that kick-started it. Even though I wouldn't really call their sound garage rock, to be um, to be honest. What would you call it's The Strokes? Anyway, The Strokes, uh, The White Stripes, The Hives uh the year year years maybe kind of maybe a, a step down from those other three that I, I just named but certainly those three the strokes the hives and the white stripes kind of encapsulate that sound and all its different uh angles and sides within that movement and these guys i would say were closer to the hives sound than those other two uh, the album came out in 2002. Yeah, there's no year on it. Now, this is interesting. I'll, I'll kind of explain. So the, the reason why they had some... Uh, 2002, so is that. The reason they had some uh, uh, popularity or no, some success outside New Zealand is because they signed with a major label. They signed with the Virgin record label, at least the V2 imprint, which was... It was Virgin and V2, and I don't know the difference. I think V2 kind of sat, took a gambler more, um, not experimental, because these guys certainly aren't experimental, but maybe just, just more, of a, more of a risk, you know, a smaller bands that they thought maybe could blow up big. And so these guys signed with them, with a Virgin label. And there's a thing in New Zealand, is that New Zealand is a small country, and... We have a certain cultural peculiarity, yeah, peculiarity, peculiar, peculiar, peculiarity. I think I got it there. Jesus, um, that often bands won't be popular here, but the moment they find some sort of popularity overseas or internationally, then then they'll get popular here. It's almost like, well, if other countries think they're good, then they must be good. So let's make them successful in New Zealand too. And that doesn't happen a whole lot. That's not as though that's something that happens often because that would be quite strange for some. But something, a, a band, that, or not a band, a, 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 um, a thing that did happen with was the comedy duo, The Flight of the Concords, who were around about 10, 15 years ago. You might have seen their show on HBO. They were around in New Zealand for a long time. I remember when I was quite young, used to see Jermaine Clement and Brett McKenzie in different things and together, and you'd hear their names and different comedy things. But they were never anything more than kind of middling success in New Zealand. Then whatever happened, they went overseas and they signed that deal with HBO and had a pretty big, successful TV show. And they also were on international... Um, Comedy festivals like the Edinburgh Comedy Festival and maybe the uh, is it the Montreal Comedy Festival? I think they were as well. And so once that that kind of happened, then they kind of blew up here as well. But 
it's it doesn't really happen the other way as much. It seems bands that are really big in New Zealand and really popular here never seem to really find fame outside New Zealand. Like there's a band that's really popular in New Zealand. To be honest, I don't like them, but they are very popular. They're called Six Sixty. Really, not my kind of music. But they've they've done like a stadium show in Auckland, now, doing a, I think it was a sold out stadium show. The big like Eden Park, which is the biggest stadium in in New Zealand. For anyone to do a stadium show is big. Like the other acts that have played there have been like um, Billy Joel and Guns N' Roses and Pink just played there. She played two shows there last week. Um, that level of artist. So for, and even a lot of them wouldn't have sold out. But for for a New Zealand act to sell out a stadium, is in New Zealand is huge. Because it's a small population, and to get market share, it's not easy, especially in this day and age. And <clears throat> so, they, and they they sell out things all around the country, and they you know that is everywhere. However, they I don't think anyone outside of New Zealand would have even even heard the name before, let alone heard the music or anything else. Whereas there are other bands. And artists that are more popular outside. But anyway, I've talked about this enough. These guys kind of went that direction where they <coughs> they seem to get more popular outside first, outside New Zealand first. Then they got, you know, we picked up as well afterwards. Their sound, like I said, is, is on the hives end of the spectrum of that kind of garage rock, early 2000s, the, the band. They were from Cambridge, which is a small town, not even a city, a small town outside of Hamilton, which is a small city. In a small country. Uh, so they're from, you know, not from the big smoke at all. This was secondhand, as you can see from the Blue Dot special sticker. That means it's from Real Groovy Records, a city, <coughs> sorry, a record shop in my city. $4, I would guess, for a Blue Dot special. Usually it's at 2 or $4. Now, the interesting thing about this edition, or this pressing, whatever you want to call it, is this doesn't have the Virgin label imprint on it. Because I know this was put out by Virgin. What I'm seeing here, now this is, I've actually just noticed this. This has got 2009 on the edge of the CD. Probably can't see that because, <clears throat> which is seven years after it was initially released and seven years after they were actually popular. So is this a reissuing of some sort? Um, you know, quite possibly. I have, I have no idea. It says Hell Squad Records, I can see there. And then on the back it says Inertia, which I think I've heard of Inertia Records as a local record label or distribution thing. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Why they have... Maybe that's for New Zealand. They, they don't have the Virgin... You know, that, that's probably it, isn't it? <clears throat> that... The Virgin deal was for international or for the UK and Europe or for the US. And they had their own independent or local label for a New Zealand release. <clears throat> uh, kind of running out of steam here. <laughs> kind of almost can't be bothered to talk about it. <laughs> the songs are okay. I think this is an okay album. I was looking at the ratings. <clears throat> they actually didn't do very well. Quite low ratings across the board. But... If you like that kind of music, kind of very straightforward, heavily influenced by ACDC, um, maybe a little bit of Deep Purple, if you like that kind of stuff that was big in the 2000s, like I said, like The Hives or The Helicopters, another Swedish band, or I can't remember those other ones now, like I said, The White Stripes a little bit in there, but not as much. Um, then you'd probably like this, MF from Hell, which is Mother Effa from Hell. I think that was the first uh, single. Um, I like Sitting Pretty as the opener. My favorite song on this, which is another of the singles I had, which is Harmonic Generator, track four. Very simple song. It's like literally one or two chords. One chord through the majority of the song. Eh, eh. Mm, 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 mm. Very simplistic song structure, but very catchy and 
yeah, I, I just like that song. <clears throat> it's got good vocal harmonies as well. I think they use like, I might actually say in here. <clears throat> I think I remember reading that they used the members of another New Zealand band as the background singers for the harmony in that, which was the band's called Mary, which is an all-girl band. Uh, I can't see any. Doesn't say. Here we go, track. No, no, it's not on there. Um, well, it says additional backing vocals. D. Datsun, Carrie Ann, Marcy Bolin, Igor DeBurst, Sonic Newth. So another kind of gimmick or thing they had was they all used Datsun as their surname. So there was Christian Datsun. He was a guitarist. Golfer Datsun was the singer bassist. Matt Datsun. I think he was the drummer. And Phil Datsun, who was the other guitarist. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> but their names are actually Debors, Livingstone, Osmet, and Somerville, as it's written on the CD. So as quickly as they came around, uh, they kind of went away, that, that sound, didn't it? It didn't really last that long, that garage rock revival, early 2000s, the in the name, influenced by ACDC and maybe kind of some post-punk influence in there from some of the other bands as well at like the strokes um another of those bands like i was thinking if these guys didn't sign with virgin if they were just you know medium success in new zealand and just on that local label inertia or hellscape or whatever it is then they would be at about the level of this band this is another new zealand band similar time similar sound the D4. Now, again, maybe you've heard of them. Probably not. If you're British, you might have. If you're Japanese, you might have. But if you're American, I'd say you're almost certainly not. Like I said, I think this was also released in 2002. Maybe not, actually. This one's maybe a little bit later. 2004, maybe. Or 2005. Their first album, which was uh, 620, that was released in 2002. Um. And again, a, a very similar sound, that kind of very straightforward rock and roll with that kind of, like seven, I guess, late 70s rock, a lot of ACDC influence, um, that kind of sound. And these guys had some popularity in New Zealand, maybe even in Australia. And like I said, maybe Britain. I know they did tour, but, you know, I mean, very low-level tours, and they also had some popularity in Japan, but that was kind of like a side thing. Um, but really beyond that, they didn't break out at all. If you ask the average person on the street in New Zealand, probably wouldn't know either of these bands, but it may if you found someone my age, and or someone who like you know was interested in music and said the Datsuns or the D4, they more often than not would know the Datsuns more than the D4, but in New Zealand, their success was very similar. These guys were actually from my, or are from my area, the area of the city I'm from. Uh, I know it's uh, Dion Palmer, who was the guitarist in the band. He was, um, he was in a band, a, a, before this band, he was in another band called Nothing At All, which is kind of this punk band from the late 90s, when he was, he was, would have been like a teenager. And um, they were kind of medium success, but lower level than these guys again. But within my area, they were successful. They used to play band uh, shows around the North Shore in Auckland. And um, they could have broken out and been quite big, I think. They got kind of very, a very uh, hooky sound. But the, uh, the singer actually died in that band, nothing at all. The, the lead singer, Tony Brockwell. He, um, he passed away, a very, I think, of leukemia or something, or lymphoma, one of those kind of like blood cancers, I think. And he would have been like 20, something crazy like that, which is, you know, insane to think about. Um, what else was going to say? Oh, actually, I've, I've seen both these bands live probably a, a bunch of times. I actually saw, I used to live behind... A pub. I guess we don't really have pubs in New Zealand. Sometimes we call them pubs, but they're not really pubs in the British sense. So let's just say it's more of like a sports bar, but a, 
a working class sports bar. It's in the kind of suburbs and it's kind of like a big area with a big car park and they have pool tables and pokies, you know, like slot machines and working men go there after work and have beer. Well, they used to have uh, music acts come through. And again, they have relatively, for New Zealand, relatively big ones, like exactly like this kind of size. And I saw the D4 there one night and they were, um, they were fucking great. Really good show. And um, they have a song called North Shore Bitch, which is the area I'm from is the North Shore, the North Shore of Auckland. And that's where they grew up as well. So they've got a song called North Shore Bitch. Um, it's actually not on any of their albums. It's on one, I think on their very first EP is the only place you can find that. And they played that song that night to uh, raucous applause. So yeah, two D bands from New Zealand from the early 2000s from the similar sound movement. These guys have broken up. I know they don't, are not a going concern anymore. I'm pretty sure they just passed a 20th anniversary for 620, their debut album. I think that they, that was talked about a year or two ago. These two guys are still together, but <coughs> not as a continuous going concern. I think they released another album after this on Virgin around 2004, 2005, which didn't do much. And I think it was only a two album deal. And by that time, physical music was on the way out and big label record contracts were on the way out. And, um, and so you don't really hear much about them nowadays, but they do pop up from time to time on local shows, local festivals. The last time I saw them was 13 years ago in 2011, uh, the Rugby World Cup was hosted in New Zealand. I don't know if you know what rugby is. It's a, it's a sport that's the national sport in New Zealand. And the Rugby World Cup happens every four years. And uh, that 2011 was New Zealand's turn. We hosted it. We also won it that year as well. And anyway, at, um, you know, before the games and stuff like that, they would have like concerts and shows just around the city to kind of, you know, to support the, the World Cup and like lots of people from around the, around the world came. So it was just, I guess, an opportunity to showcase New Zealand music or whatever. Anyway, these guys played uh, and I watched their show. It was pretty good. The guy's voice, Dolph's voice, I'd say, isn't great live. Uh, very kind of, not the kind of thing you can keep up over years, I think. He kind of would take a toll on your, your vocal cords, the way he sings. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't imagine that's very interesting for many people. However, you never know. Two second ash, like I said, I got that from Real Groovy. This one I picked up, you can see the condition of this is a bit worse. It's kind of like residue of stickers on there and the jewel case hub is completely smashed. Smashed and bro. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Thank you for watching.